And good evening. Welcome to Pagel Arena. Tonight in an interesting contest. We have two, two Minnetonka teams playing each other in district hockey play. Uh, Minnetonka Blue and Minnetonka Black V2 teams. And I'm joined by Eric Johnson, who is the girls hockey coach here at, for the Skippers in town and should be a good game. We're looking forward to it, Marty. It's great doing the game with you. I'm looking forward to this again. We have uh, the black team with, with Coach Matt Quinn and his staff. They're going to be more of a run and gun, 2-1, two, 2-4 two, check, go at them, pressure, pressure kind of approach. I know that Mike Woodley's looking forward to playing this 1-2-2, two, two, 4 check style that he talked about uh, before the game. He said they were using that in the Eden Prairie Tournament. And I think that uh, it would be interesting about to see how the two styles contrast here in this game tonight. But really looking forward to it. It's going to be a good matchup, and we'll look forward to bringing it to you. And hey, good evening and welcome to Pagel Ice Arena. We got a, a big red match tonight. Tonight we're uh, joined by Eric Johnson. I'm Marty Burley and we are underway. And we'll try to keep this confusion on who's what because they're from the same town and same color. <laughs> Great to be here with you, Marty. Looking forward to it. And just to let you know, the team in white is the B2 black team. The team in all blue is the B2 blue team. It's going to be confusing. Bear with us. We'll get it done. And we whistle right out to play. Um, Eric got a, you know, this is kind of an interesting situation. It's a good, good thing for these teams to play each other. But what would you tell you? Yeah, they're just going out just to fake it, focus on doing their job as opposed to hit the buddy across the, the way. You know, this is the biggest game of the year for these kids. They sit across the lunch table from each other at school, and they talk smack about how they're going to beat each other in this game. And, uh, and there, there's going to be some happy and some not so happy customers tomorrow, uh, depending on this one turns out. And they've got all day to plan for this, but they have no school today. They've been off yesterday and today. You know, the Minnetonka School District, it seems like you got more days off and you got more days on. All right, back to the action. Uh, we're just going to call them blue and black. And the blue team is actually the blue team. And breaking out to the zone on the wing is the blue team and controlled by the black. This is Riddell, he's knocked off the puck. Tie up outside the blue line and a mad scrum out in out the front of the net. That was Ethan Criswell for the, for the, 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 the team wearing white. Ethan uh, is known as Little Lee, but he plays big, so uh, don't mis misconstrue his nickname. He played big against the biggest player, uh, Jackson Woodley, that last play. Play still out at center ice. Neutral zone, front side back into the blue zone. Back there to pick it up is Lacrosse. Sends it around the net. Gilbertson has it. Back over to Lacrosse. I suppose it's going to take him a while just to get the get them all warmed up and get used to what's going on with this. Just getting into the flow of things. Nico LaCourse, number 71. LaCourse. LaCourse. I'm not from here. It's all good. <laughs> and we got Jake Herbert, number 21, as well on defense okay. in front of the net. You're doing awesome. Back out to the point. Shot from there. Deflected. And a rebound. And score. Looks like might be Justin. Looks like Justin Radel. Justin Radel, number 10. Pick up the, Justin uh, Radle on the goal. Well, the black team goes up 1-0 early on. That was period a shot number one. the point from Luke Larson. Rebound in front by Justin Radel. Nice pass to set up Larson was Ethan Criswell. And we're back under play. And we'll pick up the official assist a little bit later. Is there a trophy involved? No, just bragging rights. Pride. Bragging rights and pride, which I think would go, go a lot further for these kids in this game. That's Criswell again. He's having a big game so far. He's really mixing it up. Black team controlling most of the offensive action. Oh, 
That's Tommy Quinn, we're number 22 in white. We're playing for the black team. He's a spark plug, physical player, goes to the, the, the net. He looks a lot like Dino Cicerelli. Cicerelli yep. used to wear 22 for the Stars. Watch Tommy Quinn play just like Dino. And, and at this age group, Eric, there's, there's such a disparity. Some kids grow bigger. There's an example, Jackson Woodley. He's a monster, and he's still got other kids out there that are still waiting for their growth period. It is. You know, you got everything. You got the full gamut of that that cycle, that puberty cycle. Some kids don't have hair on their armpits, and some guys got shaving their beards. It is. It's a big difference, and uh, the kids have to, you know, take that into consideration when they're going to play. The smaller players don't always take the bigger players head on. Um, as a, it's an advantage for the bigger players for strength and speed, etc. But but uh, that's Bantams for you. It's the first time they can check, and there's a huge size disparity. Shot from the left point. Big save made by Schlosser, goes along the boards. Once Matthew's a tall goalie, does a good job with his rebounds. Boyby has it, fan on a shot. Controlled by the black, and they will try to clear it out of the zone. As they change their forward group. Herbert. Out of center, it's along the near boards. He's checked off the play. And uh, the blue team is going to change their forward group. Jake Herbert's wearing the C for the blue team. Watch him make, for making some big plays. He's the most improved player in the whole age group. Now, most of these kids are eighth, ninth graders, some seventh graders. Yeah, almost all of them are in eighth or ninth grade, and there's there's a few of the seventh graders that have summer birthdays. I don't see it's a two-year program, and, and there's occasional summer birthdays that can also play as sophomores. That's more rare, okay. but it is a two-year program, and then they go on to the high school hockey when they're sophomores. Robbie Woodley. Evans. Five minutes into this first period, the Phantom B2 black team leading 1-0. Got in the zone by Riddell, who has the goal for the black team. Evans fires it in for the blue team, and they'll go back and regroup. This is Boomer Well with the puck. And who's his cousin out there? He's got a cousin out there or something on the other team? You know, from what was, I heard? That was actually that was actually Beckett Malota with the puck. Boomer Well was playing wing, that was my mistake. On the cousin, I'm gonna have to do some digging to find out who the cousin is. So they, they, they got, I don't know if they're first cousins or whatever, but they're playing against each other. Yeah, we gotta check that out. Of course with it. Pops up into the air, still back into the blue zone. Tight four checking in the corner. Well, just in case you're wondering, Eric, I'm starting to feel the heat now. They, they found the power button. I'm good. <laughs> you know, I think that there was 30 some thousand dollars invested a couple years ago to fix the heater, so I know MYHA would feel happy to, to know that it's working. Yeah. And just to remind folks, the team with the white jerseys is the Bantam B2 black team. The one in all blue is the Bantam B2 blue team. Back in the uh, black zone in the left corner. That's a couple of ninth graders going at it, Applegate and, and Sessa. Shot on goal by Nessa, steered aside by Tripp. Puck comes out to center ice, and that's over the puck. Fires him back into the blue zone. They tie up along the boards and fire back into the blue end of the ice. Williams with it. Stolen away there. Lincoln Kohler's providing some forechecking pressure. Number 45, the tall right-hander. Even though I got my glasses on this year, don't like the jerseys, <laughs> blue letters with that blue stripe on there. It's a broadcasting nightmare. Number seven is Alexander. Is Bryce Alexander? Look, look to him to be one of the faster skaters on the ice tonight. And yeah, delayed offside on the play. And they'll come back out and face off outside the blue 
zone. Well, so far the, the, the black team that's wearing white has come out with a little more energy and a little more jam, and the blue team's just starting to find their way, making some better breakout passes, and we're a little more back and forth uh, at this point. And that's the, the games I observed with the blue team over the weekend when they played in the Eden Prairie Tournament. They started out slow in the first period, picked it up in the second, and they did very well finishing second in that tournament. Yeah, I watched them play up in uh, St. Michael a couple weeks ago. The same thing happened. They got down a goal. They ended up scoring three in the third period to win the game. That's the goal scorer, Justin Radel, on the forecheck. He's backed up by Alexander. He's trying to put it out of his own. He's doing it. He's bringing it off the center ice. On the forecheck, we have RJ Hughes. We have Eric Applegate. We have Jack McMillan for the blue team, putting on a lot of pressure in an attack triangle. In the association, do you just do designate teams as the top line, or one, number one line, two line? You just... The association, we, we roll them. It's our, it's our guideline and our philosophy that we just we roll the bench. Everybody plays the same amount, and uh, you know we want everybody to have that chance to play in those key situations, last minute of a period last minute of a game, power play, penalty kill, because you don't know. When they get to high school, like we talked about, the stage that kids are at in puberty, how much they grow, how much passion they have for the game when they're 17, you know, a lot of that changes. So we want to make sure all the kids have a chance to play in those big moments and uh, don't get type typecast too much at too young age. Fun. It's just a game. It's going to feel a little more like a job. You know, as we get older, they'll have to accept the role, and, and so, you know. But right now, they're all paying the same amount. They deserve to play the same amount. <laughs> it's what's fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I think it's it, 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 you roll the bench, it all comes out fair. Good net drive by Jackson Gould and a nice pass by Jackson Woodley.
We get more ice. Yeah, we get more ice. We get more opportunities. And, and the, the eighth and ninth graders on this team. Oh yeah, we have a, a lot of great development opportunities on this team. Back in the uh, blue zone. Again, uh, the all blue are actually blue. Now we got B2 blue. The team in blue and white is the B2 black team. Playing the same uh, league. Yeah, so this is a district game. They both played. Oh, this actually at, counts. They played D6 hockey in the same league, so this is a league game. Okay. There's even more, more incentive. And is there playoffs? There is playoffs. There's District 6 playoffs, so they can face each other again. It's a double elimination. Um, and everybody qualifies and then they get seated afterward? Everybody qualifies. You're seated based on how you do in your league, regular season league play. That was Tommy Quinn with a shot on net from the left post. And there's only, like, two weeks besides this game, maybe a couple of games left in the season? The regular season? Yeah, these guys, they just have a handful of district games left. They go until about mid-February, and then the playoffs start. Okay. Racing for the puck. We might have a delayed penalty call. I'm not sure on who. They both went down. The uh, penalty's going to be on number four, Luke Williams, for the yeah, black yeah. team. He took down Jackson Woodley, both two of the faster skaters on their team, got into a foot race for the puck, and uh, Williams took Woodley down. It shows how observant we are. <laughs> we didn't even notice. Nice shot by Jake Herbert. That's why we're, we're skating four on four right now for another 30 some seconds. Still in the black zone again, the white jerseys are the black team. The all blues are the blue. Both teams short handed. So the penalty that we missed, you know, Eric Applegate's such a nice, quiet kid that he quietly went in the box and we didn't even notice it. Number six for the blue team. He is going to get on the penalty box in two seconds for the blue. They'll be on the power play for a minute 12. And here he comes. The here blue comes team is on the power play. Riddell trying to get it out of the zone. He's tied up with one of the blue players along the board, far board. So there's a rule now in Minnesota hockey, you cannot ice the puck when you're on the penalty kill. I, I saw that the last it. game, and I'm like, is that new this year? It's new this year. And what was it? Uh, the, and and uh, the they, they might have put it in last year, but anyways, they, the reasoning is uh, puck possession, teaching kids how to control the puck and not throw it away. Okay. So we want the penalty kill team to be um, to be a little more disadvantaged and have to make a play out of their zone instead of just throwing it all the way down. That way the puck is on somebody's stick more more often. Well, which makes sense because at this level, that's, and is it just Bantam and... It's, it's all the way. It's squirt PB back. back. It's everywhere. Which, which gives, gives more, teaches them more about just instead of just getting the puck and firing it all the way down the ice. It does. They, just, they, they, they learn the skills instead of just dumping it. Right, right. They've, you know, but they still a, a have few, to chase it though. They still have to chase it. Right. They still Part have to of the way, it. at least. <laughs> but uh, it's a good rule. It, it promotes puck control and passing and, and uh, players having to make plays as opposed to just shooting it all the way um, Any other rules that they made uh, different you things know, that I haven't noticed? You know, years ago they made a rule where you, at, at the younger levels, where you have to uh, all come in on sides and if the puck comes back out, Everybody's got to come back out and you have to pass the puck and keep it and enter on sides again uh, instead of doing your tag up ice off sides. But they allowed the Bannons to go back to it where if you still have a player in the zone, you can fire the puck in. And as long as he tags up, everybody can go back in. So Bannons in high school, they play tag up off sides. But for the Squirts and Peewees, they make you, it's called instant off sides, and they make you come back across all five on sides. And that's also about puck control, so you're not just firing the puck in and tagging up and firing it in and tagging up. It's a little bit better flow to the game. It's a better flow, and it's again aimed at puck control and skill development. Yeah. 
Uh, we start in the second period, the uh, black team leading 1-0. And both teams have switched ends of the ice. So the, again, the white team is the B2 black team is in white, and the blue team is all blue. And there's your icing. There's the icing. Luke Williams gonna get out of the box in five seconds. Could have just sent it down a little slower, and maybe you gotta time that better. <laughs> Face off in the black zone. Power play with another four seconds left to go, and they control it. And unfortunately, they'll be coming back with another icing, but uh, both teams have full strength. Got so it'll be interesting point. to see how this game unfolds. The blue team, Mike, Coach Wet Mike really said that the team put in a 1-2-2-4 two, two, check in this Eden Prairie tournament and felt like they were able to create more turnovers mm -hmm. uh, in the game and get more puck possession out of it. And it'll be interesting to see how that four check works as the game goes on. I had a chance to watch a couple of those games over the weekend, and uh, they played very, took them a, a period or so to get going, but uh, they pretty much dominated the second period. I know that Matt, Matt Quinn and, and Kai Malota and their staff have got a, they've got a, or I'm sorry, it's, 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 it's uh, Matt Quinn and, and Mr. Well. Kai is on, the, on one of the doors, and Chris is on the other door. Mm -hmm. Those guys are running a 2-1-2, a more of an aggressive attack forecheck with a pinch on the weak side. And so they might go to a 2-3 pinch, which is really aggressive, pinching the wings in the, uh, in the second half of the, of the game. We'll have to watch for that. They've got the speed and the, the defensive strength to do that kind of a fair check. Shot on goal by Kohler, steer to side by Chip. Still in the uh, blue zone as they try to break out. Bringing out his Hughes on the right side, takes a shot, and that goes up and into the netting. Face off on the, down in the black zone. Still one nothing black over the blue. I don't think it's like a Bears Viking, a black and blue game, but it's local. Minnetonka against Minnetonka. You know, Luke, Luke's known to be, he's known to be really, really strong, stronger than an ox. And uh, he might be related to the Hanson brothers according to his coaches. He's a tough kid. He made a great defensive play with his stick there and deflected that puck out of play. Players using a stick is one of the most important things to do on, a, on defense, is just get it in the way of the shot. Mm -hmm. Luke did a great job at that. Breaking the black team save, a, a shot from Alexander. And the black keeps it in, back behind the net, that's Kohler. Tries the center out in front. Intercepted there by Howard. Howard behind his net, skates around one player. Looking for some avenue to Get it out of the zone or pass it to. Down he goes in the corner. He's checked off the play. Still in the uh, blue zone and finally cleared out the center. Williams had it. Speaks back. Up off the boards. Intercepted there by the blue. Comes back up to the point. Howard tried to keep it in. Checked off the play and they, they skate for it. Back into the blue zone. Not quite cleared in the zone. And picked up there by a, King. That was a great check on that last rush by Beckett Malota. He, he prevented a, uh, an odd man rush for the black team. Puck controlled in the uh, black zone. By the black as they try to clear the zone. I know this sounds confusing, folks. Black and blue. Minnetonka, Minnetonka. <laughs> She's making a black and white broadcast. I don't even confuse them more. Old school. It'd be nice, just, it'd be nice to call them white for the night. You just call them the white team. Yeah, that's true. That would confuse me, though. It took me a half hour to figure out which one was which. Out to the point, Larson fires from there, deflected, and it's steered aside by the goaltender trip. Shots on goal uh, through the five minute mark of the second period, the black leading seven to five. And shots on goal. Each team with one penalty, black leading one nothing. Clearing pass, 
Broken out there, Gilbertson has it, fires it into the zone as they change their forward unit. Black team uh, clears it out. Intercepted by Hughes. And sometimes it's a little hard to tell who these players are because the jerseys, these little guys, the jerseys are tucked into their pants. Ethan Criswell just broke Criswell. that puck out. For and he's playing like double duty back. tonight because they have one player out, Jack McKenzie, who's out with an injury, so he's playing double duty tonight. Blue and team fires it back into the zone. High up along the near boards. Shot on goal from the side by Hughes. It's deflected aside by Schlosser. This is going to become a test of endurance. This is a really very fast pace that both teams are holding up here. And and not much whistle-wise, though. You know, not, not many whistles. Have, has a whistle blown once in the second period? Well, outside of the... No? Yeah. <laughs> really, the referees swallowed their whistles. <laughs> And it's, it, when you talk about endurance, I'm always amazed at uh, State High School players where they have to play three games in three days. But teams like this, they play two games in one day. Yeah. And they might play a game Friday night, two Saturday, two Sunday. They might play five games in three days. You know, the, the State High School tournament has TV timeouts, three yep. of them a period. Yep. And uh, it, it actually rests up the bench quite a bit, you know. So these games like this, when the whistle's not blowing, I mean, these, these lines are rolling, they're playing about 12, 13 players. And uh, this is, this is a, a fast pace and the type of game that in the third period, whichever team's got either more bodies or is in a little better shape, could start to take over. Oh yeah. Blue team firing it back in. They're trying to control some the action, but uh, so far the, the rink is tilted a little bit towards the uh, black end. Finally, the black team just does what they can, just fire it down, get an icing, and uh, get a timeout. And the whistles do work. Finally got a stoppage about halfway through the period. That was, that was Boomer Well taking an icing. You know, it was a smart play. His team needed one. Uh, the blue team was just peppering and, and created a lot of four checking pressure. And finally, you know, hey, Boomer said, let's take an icing, get some fresh bodies on, and see if we can break this puck off. Especially because they got the second period, they got further to go to the bench to get a change. Yeah, that bench is a long ways away, not even the second period. Well, you like can you say it, it looks like miles. You're leaving your team hanging if you, if you decide to leave the defensive zone and change, and coaches don't like that. So you're better off getting the red line and getting it deep or else taking an icing. Back in the uh, black zone, wearing the white jerseys tonight. Crisscross pass and picked off and fired back out to center ice. That by Herbert. A long That's pass, a good pass off ice by Beck and Malota. Alexander has it along the far boards. They tie up in the corner behind the net. And a rink right pass clears the zone. Picked up there by Williams. Williams up to Alexander, across the line, comes in, fires. Uh, shoulder save, not sure where the puck went. Hopefully I think Tripp caught that puck in his own pit and it dropped down into his blocker, but he, he wasn't sure if he had it or not. And uh, he had squeezed it, I think, in his armpit. He was hoping it didn't go through. Hard shot by Bryce Alexander coming out the top of the circles. Snapshot off the left circle here, and uh, we have a goalie change. Looks like we've got Mr. Palmer's in. Looks like Max Palmer's coming in to relieve Ian Tripp. Off the face off. Controlled by the Minnetonka Black team. Black team is going to hope to get some early shots on Max Palmer. Uh, it's tough as a goalie coming in and catching. Some, if they get some grade A chances, it's really tough to come in and, and face shots from in close. You, you prefer your first couple shots are from about 50 to 60 feet in the blue line. And coming in cold in a cold arena, they don't, they don't give you a little bit of time to warm up. No, nope, you don't get the old 
three minute timeout anymore for a goalie change. Back in the yeah. day, they allowed that for teams, but I think coaches were in use it and do their own timeout on the bench while you put in the second goalie. Exactly. And just a footnote, folks, just uh, one of the notes that we had for tonight's game, a uh, reminder that one of the, the uh, B2 Blue team has a fun drive. They do this every year. It's for the GDRF, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Uh, you can get a hold of their website through the Tonka Hockey Organization. If you'd like to donate, uh, last year I believe they were the uh, team that donated the most money of any sport team for the JDRF. So if you get a chance to do that, uh, it's the TonkaHockey.org. Look up the Minnetonka B2 Blue Team and they will direct you uh, through that website. We got Bryce Alexander, we got Patrick Horner, we got Tommy Quinn on the rush. And that's a big save for Max Palmer, his first save of the night. Back out the point, deflected. Alexander has it in the corner. He's being checked off the play. And the blue team is breaking out. One thing about Jackson Willie, really he skates just like his father. <laughs> Probably faster than him. Oh! That, that, was, big that was Tommy Quinn with a big hit on Leo Boyd. Might have got a look up a little high, left side. Oh, a staring pass. Nobody home. Back out to the point. Shot there by Howard. Hits the traffic out the front. Clearing the pass. The of this game could change a little bit after a big check like that. Oh, yeah. It wakes all up. Both benches up. Back in the blue zone. Again, the... Uh, Blue team is the B2 blue team. The team in white is the B2 black team. Both Minnetonka. Polar behind the net, one of the bigger players on the team. Fires it back out to the point, but it's picked off here. Eli it, King with the puck. And all the way down the ice in the far corner. Back out to Howard, shot, stick save by Schlosser. Schlosser looks pretty steady tonight. I think that the blue team's gonna have to get some traffic in front, some screens and some tips, and maybe some, some pretty goal chances. A lot, of, a lot of plays been on the outside on, on the boards that are not getting anything on the inside. Yeah, yeah, the blues have a lot of perimeter shots on, on Matthew. He's getting a stick down, he's redirecting those rebounds out to the corners, and uh, they're going to need some better scoring chances to pull them by them. Got another penalty. We're going to Looks like number three, 33, Robbie Evans, is going to go in the box for two minutes. Feel yes, some shame and then go free. They said it was a bench penalty. There was too many men on the ice or something. So the uh, B2 Blacks on the power play. And it clears out the zone. Fire it in, Howard has it behind the net. Up along the boards, where Gilbert's in, clears the zone and fired down the ice. But not too far for icing by Hughes. And Alexander has it on his off like point. The right team's in a, a camp. Lincoln Kohler out in front of the net, big number 45. We got Bryce Alexander on the half wall with Malota up top and Luke Larson up top as well. Tommy Quinn, little, little mini, mini Dino Cicerelli is looking to get Ooh, off the ice. Big save by Palmer. Shot by Alexander. Controlled by LaCourse. Stolen away. LaCourse has it, backhands it out to center. And the black team's going to have to regroup. Kohler with it. Fires it in, over the top of the net. Centering pass, out in the slot, kicked away, mad scrum, and Palmer dives out to cover it up. Well, it's a good start by Max Palmer. He's, he came in cold, he's been, he's been tested with a couple of shots early. He just took a much needed whistle for his team. And this blue team needs to regroup, get four new skaters on, and hopefully, get out of this next 30 seconds alive. 
And just uh, just under three minutes left to go in period number two. The black team leading one to nothing. At center ice, pass uh, over to McMillan. And he fires it into the black zone. Black on the power play for another 15 seconds or so. Shots on goal 14 10 in favor of the black. Two and a half to go here in period number two. Both teams are at full strength. Center so pass out in front, and Palmer got his stick on it, deflected it past an open black player. That was a crafty pass. That was Patrick Horner in the corner looking for Criswell in front of the net. Uh, smart play, but again, Max Palmer used his stick, his goalie stick, to deflect that puck away. It would have been 2-0 right there. The blue team's hoping just to get some momentum here in the last two minutes of this period so they can carry it into the third. Outside on the uh, blue team, they'll re face off outside the blue line. One fifty-nine left to go, second period. Both teams at full strength. The course fires it in. Cut out there by Chris Wall. Gates in across onto the blue zone. Taken down on the play. Back behind the net. That was Nico course putting a good check on Logan Warren in the corner. Looks kind of like an MME fight right now. It's a, it's a <laughs> ground and pound like style that the black team is using right now. He's ground him down and pound him down in the corner. Keep like, the puck lower below the goal line of the blue team and eventually run him down. That looks like it's the, the black team's uh, game plan and it seems to be working at this point. And they break out. Well, under a minute left to go here in the second period. One nothing black. Back out to the point, they try to break up along the boards. Centering pass is cut off and taken behind the net. Blue team keeps it in the zone. That's a headsy breakout play by Beckett Malola there. Long pass cut off by Lacrosse. Lacrosse, excuse me. Long pass deflected by the Blue, so no icing call. Kept in by Kohler. Quinn checked off the play. A bunch of players behind the net. It's pretty physical behind the net. And that ends the uh, second period. No scoring in period number two. One power play for the black team. Shots and goals at this point, 15 to 11 in favor of the Black. That's a good game so far. I think if the blue team is probably thinking about, let's stay out of the box, let's try to play five on five. Maybe we get a power play in the third period so we can get some sustained pressure and get some better shots on, on Schlosser. I think if the, the Black team is thinking, hey, we got a lot of momentum. We're keeping the puck in the offensive zone. We're making that blue team go 200 feet every time they get a chance. And let's just win them down, let's grind them down. Let's, Keep our third forward high, and if we can get a good scoring chance, we try to pop the next one. But right now, uh, the way they're playing with a one goal lead is, is is the right way. They're not allowing any out man rushes against, and they're not allowing the blue team to get any sustained pressure. What's new and exciting in the uh, Men's Talk Hockey Association? Well, I think the, the, the greatest new thing that happened in June of 2017 when we opened up a rink uh, a little over a year ago, rink two over next door. You know, all of the families in this program have been able to get more ice time, uh, all the kids have been able to get on the ice more. I think as a community builder, people have been able to see each other a lot more as we all come in the same venue. And so I think that this has been a phenomenal um, add to our program. You know, this, this rink, Cradle One, was built back in 2001. And if you look at the success of the program, 
we went from 600 players to about 1,100 players from 2006 to 2017. No, so, and then boys this, and this girls? Group, boys and girls included. There's about 850 boys and about 300 girls in this program. So this, this rank one had a lot to do with this program's growth, and this rank two will continue to help you know, the program take the next level. Keep up with those guys that are used to us. Well, <laughs> you look around, you know, in, in number Murray's wise. Got, Eden Prairie's got three sheets, and Dinah's got four sheets, and wyzetta has got three sheets, and you know we have two here, and then we have one over at Minnetonka B. We don't get much ice at Minnetonka A because there's a lot of figure skating and other stuff goes on there, but you know we, we needed another sheet of ice, and uh, having a multi-rank facility is really big for building community and building the kind of uh, you know family hockey culture that we wanted to have here at Minnetonka. And so there's a lot of people that have done a lot of work here that we, we need to thank and be grateful for that have made this happen. And this is all a community fund drive to, to raise money to build this, not school district-wise? or The school district didn't put a dime in. The school okay. district allowed the land, you know, gave, gave a land lease, um, but did not put any money toward the, the facilities. And, uh, no, no budget for heat? You know, not much budget for heat around here. So you have to dress warm, you got a bigger smile, it's a hockey rink, it means there's better ice, there's faster ice, so we like it cold. There you go. We are underway here in the uh, third period, one nothing black. <laughs> the team dressed with the white jerseys, the Bantam 2 black team, the all blues are the blue team, ironically. And it is deep in the blue zone, or the black zone. And a clearing pass is cut off, comes back out to the course. Shot out there. Deflected by Applegate, just went wide. And a clearing pass, Wait, icing is waved off, probably won't make it anyway. That was a good idea right away. Uh, Jake Herbert shot from the point. Eric Applegate tried to tip it in front. He was screening Matthew Schlosser. He was trying to tip the puck, and that was a great form of, of attack to start the period with. They're gonna need to get those scoring chances to get one past Matthew. Williams keeps it in for the black team. Tight four checking by the black team. Shot on goal. Stop at the defense. And Puck slides out to center ice. Garnered in the air by uh, number four, Williams. I apologize, folks. I don't know all the players as well as Eric does. Logan Warren passed it back to Spencer Nessa. Nessa shot just wide. Leo Boyne's trying to work on the boards, but Luke Williams gets, keeps the puck in play. Now Jake Herbert behind his own bench. Four check by Ethan Criswell. Moves it up to Jack McMillan. And McMillan back behind the net. Justin Radel, the goal scorer, gets knocked down by Jake Herbert behind the net. The black team is doing a good job supporting each other and defending in layers. Blue team is having a hard time getting any sort of sustained attack when they have more than one player on the puck. They get a player on the puck, but they're isolated right now because White's doing such a good job of defending. Mm -hmm. Back in the black zone. The Blue Knolls, all they need is one shot, and this game's tied up. So really, you know, it's anybody's game because of that. And, and the black team hasn't really extended their lead. So Blue's hanging around, and, and every chance they get to score is a big deal. Overtime? Maybe. Is it play overtime or is it a shootout? You know, that's a good question. That's a good question. At this age, it, I think it might have to, it might depend on how much time we have on the time clock. Or who's coming in next. You know, yeah, the hour clock, who's coming in next. What the referees say about it. They don't have a catch or bus, they're both from town. For the, for the league, they might end in a tie. I think, I think when it's over, it's over but they might allow this game to be played just for the bragging rights part. They might allow it over time, just for fun. But I think officially in the books of the league, regulation, it's over, it's over. You like the overtime or a shootout? I like the overtime. Yeah. Like the overtime. And then a goal's a goal. And, it's... and then, yeah, you play, you play it out. The shootout's a tough way to, tough way to lose or win a, a really good game this week when all these players are playing hard. You want to see it decided in an overtime. Uh, icing coming up, unless it's... Oh. Max Palmer, 
is, is you know, is picking right back up where he and Tripp left off. He's, he's shutting the door. He's giving his team a chance to get back in this thing on one shot. The mayor, uh, I remember in my reading that he's from a family of goalies. Like, uh, yeah, he, yeah his, he's got an older brother that's a goalie and a dad that's a goalie. So it, it's in their blood. And uh, they talk about goaltending every morning at the breakfast table. Those guys can't get enough of it. Shot go! That's Nico LaCourse. Yep. Fire from the inside, the goal against Green, and went through his legs, and we're going to tie a hockey game. Number 71, Nico LaCourse. We had. Uh, the we off. won the face off, got it back to the point, and, and shot it through some traffic in front and found the five hole right between Matthew Slosh's legs. So apparently the coaching staff was relaying the message you were trying to give them. Or they can read lips from 200 feet away. Well, I think that that one was, uh, when you look at him play goal, you, you see the size and the way he's been controlling the puck and those rebounds. You know, the only way you get shots by him is with traffic in front. What we usually say as coaches, if the goalie can see it, they can stop it. Because mm -hmm. as you get older, these goalies are good. They've done a lot of training, and they cover the net well. And if they can see the puck, they can stop it, especially from outside. So we got a 1-1 one -one hockey game, about 10 and a half minutes left to go here in the third period. So it comes out to the center ice. For the black. Spins around, checked by Applegate. Williams still with it. Get it up along the boards, and the black team breaks out. You know, the goal scorer, Nico LaCourse, number 71, has been playing a lot of his career at forward. And, and this year, recently, Coach Woodley and the staff moved him back to defense. He skates really well, and he has, he has a great stick. Um, and he's been really good for the team back there. He credits that some of their recent success to that move with Nico playing defense. He's responsible in his own end. He has a good shot from the point. And he's the one that just fired that wrister past Schlosser. Puck slides into the blue zone. They scrum along the faceoff circle, and finally the blue has control. They clear the zone. Comes along the near board. Penalty call there as Melody is taken down by Woodley. And a little face off out near center ice. Jackson got away with one there. It looked like, it looked like he chopped, uh, like chopped the legs and missed the puck, and the refs, the refs are swallowing their whistles right now. Uh, it looks like they wanted to see this thing settled five on five. I'm just curious, is that the other referees have some helmet or a camera has a, or something? A GoPro uh, camera on his helmet there. Wow. Different perspective. <laughs> Kohler breaks in on his off wing. Picks it in behind the net. The course tied him up. They send it over in the near corner. Woodley with it, sends it back behind the net. Of course has it. Still trying to clear it out of the zone. One foot at a time. And a shot down the ice. They're gonna have an icing call against the blue team. We talked about the endurance now, you know, just under nine minutes left. It looks like both teams are slowing down and getting tired. You know, the ice is not in great shape anymore. So it's going to take uh, most likely one of those goals where the puck gets shot to the net, rebound, and somebody being able to finish on a rebound play. But sustained pressure in the offensive zone is going to be the key to the next goal. Just get it on that, crash the net. Black team trying to get it out in front. Center up front. Palmer steers it his side. That was Griswell to the goal scorer, Radel. And uh, just a little bit wide. Patrick Horner and Ethan Criswell, Justin Radel have put on a great four check there. But Max Palmer with a great glove save to get a whistle for his team. That's the second offensive zone faceoff in a row for Team Black. We're just going to see if uh, this starts to wear down the blue team. Mm -hmm. Still got all those same lines out there. 
Puck comes all the way back in. Griswold with it. Played off eight is waved off. McMillan stole the puck. Puck is bouncing around. Applegate sends it into the black zone. Ties up along with Nessa in the corner. Centered out in front. Well, right through the legs of one of the uh, blue players. Still loose. Luke controlling it right out in front. And finally, the goaltender, Slosher, dropped down to cover it up. A little great sloppy, board. but... Yeah, great forecheck there by, by R.J. Hughes and Eric Appleby and Jack McMillan. You know, maybe something happened in uh, the offensive zone. Just, just Rick throwing pucks toward the net, uh, finishing their checks. See what happens. Not yeah. knowing that they're you know, one shot away from being in the lead. Off the face off, Black brings it out to center ice. Coming in on the uh, left wing, I believe that's Alexander. It was Bryce Alexander. He got chased down by Nico LaCourse, and the blue team was thankful that it was Nico that was chasing him down because Bryce has got a lot of speed, number seven in white. Buck just lays motionless in the uh, black zone, out in the slot, center. Shot that just deflected wide, back out to the point. Crawford has it, he fires off the skate. Kohler has it along the boards. Now it's that conditioning part that you're talking about, all that conditioning, they tie up along the boards, usually a little more, more energy. There, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles for the puck in every game. In this game, there's been a lot of board battles and a lot of those 50-50 races for the puck. And, uh, you know, it, both, both teams are fighting with a lot of passion and, and, and a lot of heart right now. Jackson Woodley with a nice little shot. Matthew Slosser throws it and gets a whistle for his team. But both, both teams are, are really scrapping and really clawing here. Um, it's just going to take some sustained offenses on pressure, probably a pass to the point, shot back to the net, rebound roll, or maybe a quick pass out of the corner to the front of the net. But it's going to be one of those goals right in the kitchen, right, right in front of the net that is, is likely to score this next one. Malota gets it up along the board, still in the black zone as they finally carry it out to center. Dump it into the blue zone. Race Pat to the puck. Patrick Horner and Nico LaCourse are buddies and neighbors. And uh, and they're going head to head. for the next face-off, late in the game, six minutes left, and White's got an offensive zone face-off. We got Spencer Nessa at the point, we got Luke Larson at the point, hoping to get a, the puck so they can take a shot from, from the blue line. Kohler fires it out in front, shot back behind the net. Black team is just trying to keep it in the zone and see what happens. Kind of like the game's kind of shifted. You get a little action on one end, then you get more action down on the other end. It's not so much wide open like it was earlier in the game. No, it's a you know it's a momentum thing that it just it, it ebbs and flows, and, and teams you know try to control it, but it's just one of those things that you know offense's own puck possession can generate momentum. Good scoring chance generates momentum. Good chance there as Palmer deflected a shot. Going back out to the point. Nessa fires from there. It's the flex off to the corner. This is Just over five minutes left to go in this third period. 1-1 one, one hockey game. The black team's doing a good job of feeding their points and getting the blue team to extend out from their defensive uh, formation, so they, they spread them out by having to chase the puck up high and then the, the high shot comes back down to low, you know, creating that temporary opportunity where you can get a rebound without many defenders around that area. Because the blue team is, is packing it in low now, playing defense. And the white's holding his own with a pinch four check. Shot from the point, hits Palmer up high, and they scramble out in front. 
Uh, suppose at this level, when you know everybody is, you start to push and shove and then realize it's your next door neighbor. <laughs> well, they're, yeah, they're friends, they're friends outside the game, and I think that their, their emotions get the best of them during the game, and they're trying to, you know, the, the blue team's trying to protect the goalie, and Max Palmer is keeping him in it right now. Basically been in the blue zone for the last minute and a half, two minutes. Yeah. Black's got a lot of nice four checking pressure and uh, looks to have maybe a little more jump in their legs at this point. Tie up along the boards as Kohler will chase in the corner with the course as they tie up in that far corner. Some big bodies going at it with Lincoln Kohler and Jake Herbert. Two of the bigger players in the team. Another shot saved by Palmer. Scramble out in front and just goes wide to the right. Another sorry pass. The flex off the skate and Palmer dies on top of that one. Tommy Quinn rolled on the corner. Took a nice shot on net. Saved by Palmer. Criswell and Palmer were mixing it up in front for that black team. A uh, lot of good offensive chances for, for the black team. Out shooting the blue team at this point, 29 to 14. So between Chip and Palmer, they're both kind of the story of the game for this blue team. They doubled their shots just in this third period. Back out to the point. Nessa keeps it in. I think right now the blue team is just trying to keep it along the boards as much as they can. They finally clear the zone. Woodley has it. Gets it over on the wing for Bomi. And he fires it in. That hasn't happened in a while. Down in the black end. Three minutes to go, and Blue's got some offensive zone pressure. Oh, shot on goal by Gomi, and a, a save made on front. Another shot. Woodley has it. He shoots. That goes off the side of the cage. Three quick shots by the Blue team. Finally cleared off the center. The course with it. A couple Back of big saves the there by, by Schlosser. It's hard to be a goalie and play for five minutes or so without a shot. And then you get a couple of quality chances, like you just had to stop. But he's been sharp all night. About two and a half minutes left to go in this game. Tied at one. Fire down the rink into the blue zone. Up to Hughes. He tried to get it out of the zone, but fired right back into the black team. Tight checking by the uh, black team. I just got done with about three minutes with it in the blue zone. Of course, trying to get it out along the board, still in the deep in the uh, blue zone. Griswell has it, he's checked off the play. Center up, off the side of the cage. That was Justin Rado that knocked the puck down with his hand and got a quick shot on the side of the net. Team trying to get it out, and they Here's finally break out of the zone. Nice play by Luke Larson going high off the glass to Evan Crawford. Minute and a half left to go here in the game. 1-1 one, one the tie score. Centering pass out in front. Shot score! Jack McMillan. Number Jack 10, McMillan. McMillan. Going, going far down in front of the net. That was a pass off front. Eric Applegate working hard in the four check. RJ Hughes working hard in the four check. They got that puck centered. And McMillan was there on the back doorstep. Firing up high, bar down on Schlosser. Like all the pressure's down on the blue end, they finally get it out, break out, and you know, get it out in front and things happen. Just over well, a minute. The team has been sticking to a, you know, a, a solid, Defensive game plan, protecting, you know, trying to protect their goaltender as best they can, force as many shots from the outside as they can. And between between Ian Tripp and Max Palmer, you know, the blue team's been able to only allow one goal on 29 shots. That's a part that's difficult about you don't you don't extend your lead and you don't put a team away, let them hang around. Yeah. You know, a play like that is you know is a difference maker. And right now. Blues has got a lot higher percentage on their on their, their lot higher scoring percentage on their shots, and that's a difference for the game. Face off outside the blue zone. 
Go, the, the goal is empty, so Matthews will pull. Okay, pull the goalie. The black team's got six players on the ice. And 34 seconds left in the game. Shot back into the blue zone. Chris Wall has it. Chris Stays Wall, you got the net. Justin Radel. Got Tommy Quinn. Quinn with it, back out to the point. Williams. Luke Larson's going in there. He's coming in from the point. There's another one out in front. Save by Palmer. Under Big save by Palmer second. right there. That's and that, might, that might do it. The puck's not going to make it. It's a, it's a race all the way down. The puck. Well, no, I guess the game is kind of when the clock would go down and when they call possible icing. But no, no call and. Uh, the blue team that comes out victorious, even though they got outshot 29 to 17, but that doesn't matter. It's who scored how many at goals. Well, tonight the black team overall outplayed the blue team, but they but the blue team outscored the black team. And credit the defensive uh, play of the, the blue team. Credit the, the goaltending play of the blue team. You know what? It gives the black team a lot of credit. They, they generate a lot of a lot of scoring chances, a lot of puck possession, a lot of offensive zone sustained pressure, and. You know, in this game, Palmer and, and Tripp were just a little bit too tough to beat. Yep, and it's uh, you know it's a it, it's a fun night, even though it's competitive. You got both teams obviously in town here. They got friends on each other's team, so it's it's a good experience for them. And it, there's the uh, I thought I saw something. <laughs> the I don't know, is it the plastics? Maybe not Stanley Cup, but. Yeah, it, what it is. it's hard to say what that, that uh, trophy is made out of, but uh, how many different but, parts? <laughs> but Ian, Ian Tripp had a hard time holding it above his head because it looks pretty heavy. <laughs> and here's Max Palmer, who's fired up, holding up the cup. Well, uh, it's uh, not good when you're I was going to say mini down. version of Stanley Cup, but it looks like it might be a uh, the Stanley Cup might look like mini me against that thing. Uh, <laughs> parts were made from Goodwill and scrap yards are home. Great game tonight here at Pagel Arena. The two Bantam, two uh, B2 teams, the blue and the black, and one wearing white, one wearing blue. It was a little confusing, but it was a good game. And Eric, uh, well, Minnetonka won, yeah. which was a good. Well, thing, I know right? everybody's had, everybody went home happy. Everybody's a winner. We had uh, a great game between the black and the blue team. It, the momentum swung back and forth. A lot of scoring chances for each team. The black team ended up out shooting the blue team almost two to one. It was about 30 to 15. Um, all goaltenders play great. Matthew Slosher played a great game. Ian Tripp and Max Palmer played great games. You know, for a game ending like that in two to one, it was exciting, and the game was always within one shot of being tied or or, or pulled ahead. And uh, in the end, it was really a fun game to watch. All the players really laid it all on the ice and uh, played a physical game, played a good team game of hockey, and we were just entertained all night long with the uh, with the energy and the, the the heat they supplied here as well. And then, of course, at the end, they gave away the, the uh, I'm not sure, was that a trophy or not? It looked, uh, like, it was a, it looked like it was a, a large scale version of the Stanley Cup that was that was made <laughs> somewhere, uh, maybe at a hardware store or somebody's basement. Or maybe but a shop it, class, it, who knows? It, I don't know, but it looked like uh, a, a, it was a good, impressive trophy that the players had a hard time hanging on to because it was so big and, and heavy, but they were proud of it and, uh, and they deserved it tonight. Great game, two to one in favor of the B2 blue team over the black team. But as we said, Minnetonka wins. That's the most important thing. Everybody have a great night. Thanks for viewing.